I'm Aliza Stewart. I am a Feldenkrais practitioner and trainer. And my story with Moshe starts before I was born. He actually grew up with my father in Baranovich. My father was a couple of years younger than him. And they were together in the same Zionist movement. Um, and then they decided to come to Israel. My father could not actually leave because he supported his family. Uh, so he didn't go with those young men that left for Palestine. After many years, the, my father actually was part of the ghetto in Baranovich when the German occupation came. And it's a long story. He became a guerrilla fighter with the Russians against the German. But before that, his family, his children and his wife were all really slaughtered in the ghetto. Um, eventually, that's another story. Um, he came with my mother who he met after the war to Israel. And in Israel, there were a lot of survivors who lost everything. And what they wanted was a kind of quasi family. And they started organizations like societies of the people from the same town. And Baranovich, the person who was the head of that, what they called Landsmannschaft, was Shandl Feldenkrais, Moshe's mother. And next to her was always his brother, Baruch. And they met every Saturday night and I was about two or two and a half years old, and I went with my parents every Saturday night to Shandl Feldenkrais. Now, why am I telling this story? Because I actually got to see everybody from the family and we had relationships with them, but Moshe, he was either abroad doing whatever he was doing, or he didn't come in and it was interesting um, that he, he didn't want to take part in something that dealt only with the past. He thought those people were wasting their time um, and he didn't want to be part of it. Of course, he was not really, and his family also were not really part of the Holocaust. They, didn't, they were not victims like my parents. Um, so I don't know what he would have done if he was in a concentration camp, but he, he was absolutely determined not to deal with the past and go to the future, which was really Moshe Feldenkrais, yes? And that's why he always came up with new ideas, with new thoughts and a new method. And of course, when he started to work with his method, everybody in that society thought he was, and they called him that, a Michiganer. A Michiganer in Yiddish is the crazy man. Yeah, he gave up a, an illustrious career in physics, right? To do this kind of funny things, right? Like, like some of them call him the Begelmacher, yeah, because he was manipulating bodies. And that's how it was, right? So then I, I went to study music, I was a pianist, and a lot of people in the music world, he was still a Michiganer, but some of them actually went to work with him. Yeah, and um, Yohanan Riverant, one of the main, his main um, students, his wife, Yerdena Lotin, was a composer and I knew her through my teacher. But because I grew up in this household and he was a Michiganer, I didn't. And then I came to the United States and the, the, my teacher in the United States told me that I should do Feldenkrais. And I looked at her and I said, the Michiganer? <laughs> and she said, there is no Michiganer. Go back to Israel and meet him. I did because I, I did everything she said. 
And I went to Israel. Of course, he wasn't there. He was somewhere in the world. <clears throat> and Baruch was there. And I asked him, Baruch, what should I do? And he said, go to a class. Moshe thinks, and that's very interesting for me to hear. Moshe thinks now that the classes are more important than anything else. Interesting. Yeah. So I went to a class, I was very much not in contact with my body, you know, very much lacking proprioception. And, and I, uh, I lay there on the floor. It was a good practitioner. It was me. I didn't know what it was about, but I decided to pursue it. And when I came back, I went to one of the big workshops that Moshe gave in Washington DC in a huge, ballroom and I lay on the floor and he started talking he said all kind of things one of them which I'll never forget you will get way more from that workshop that you can even imagine and I thought what a megalomaniac and it was so true it is my life, he described my life. And then I lay on the floor, he started teaching and talking like Moshe did, you know? And that was it. I knew that I wanted to do the training. And I went up to him and I said, you know, Moshe, I'm Lazar Lidovsky's daughter. My name, my maiden name was Lidovsky. And I'm thinking about taking the training and he beamed because the daughter of one of the people who thought he was the Meshuganer <laughs> was going to take the training. And she's also a pianist, which made him very happy because he really liked musicians. He really did. He thought they were always looking to be better. So in the end, I, I wrote him something and to ask him something and, and he wrote me back. He was very sweet and very nice. And I still have the letter, but this is, my story with Moshe, because if I didn't go to that workshop and felt that this person is talking to my brain, this person knows that I'm intelligent. And it was an, an incredible experience. So this is my story about Moshe. And I hope, um, I hope that you experience with his work will make you sense your own intelligence. Thank you.